Hi everyone, I'm Steve Plach and welcome to Nonprofit Spotlight. As you know, Nonprofit Spotlight is a production of the Volunteer Advisory Committee here at Community Television. And every edition, uh, we highlight the nonprofit uh, organization doing great work in Santa Cruz, Santa Cruz County. And we're delighted to have uh, Yolande Wilburn, who is the uh, manager, director of our Santa Cruz Public Library System. And that is has so much to talk about. Yolande, welcome. Thank you. I'm so happy to be here. You know, it was interesting in preparing for the show. I, I read uh, your 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 biography and very rich uh, things you've done. Tell our viewers uh, who might not be as familiar with you, even though you've been here for, for a while now, you know, about your background and how you came to be the director of the Santa Cruz Public Library System. Sure. Well, I was a library kid, first of all. <laughs> um, and so I spent a lot of time in the library as a child growing up. Um, but, you know, there weren't many librarians of color who I kind of interacted with who looked like me. And so never really thought of that as a career path as I got older and went to college. And it wasn't until I was working for another organization and began doing some uh, philanthropic work, working with uh, through Rotary, actually, oh, really? um, where we did an I'm going to college program. I worked on a scholarship program for the local, uh, the company that I worked for, for the local high schools to enable um, kids who maybe struggled in high school to be able to still get some scholarship funding to be able to go to local community colleges um, and support them along their way. And so that kind of led me down a path where I did a lot of research. I got back into the library. You know, once you get older, you kind of pull away a little bit from the library and then you come back to it. Absolutely. So I came back to the library through the work that I was doing and just really uh, wanted to figure out a way where I could help uh, more people connect to resources that they needed. And so as part of that, I said, you know, it'd be great to be a librarian hmm. uh, because that you touch so many lives, right? I just remember as a child and growing up and throughout um, elementary and high school and college, how much I interacted with libraries and, and the wealth of information that I achieved. And so uh, it made me decide I wanted to go back to school and work on my master's degree in library science. So I did that, um, and as part of that, I went back to Chicago Public Library, which is the library system that I set, started out in as a child, because I'm from Chicago, Illinois, originally. And so really just uh, worked with them. The only way I could get in there was to be hired as a library page, because they, oh, yeah. the librarian positions were really tough to get. Nobody ever left. Yeah. Um, and so was working on my master's degree, working as a page part time with Chicago Public um, and just really uh, learned a lot about working in a library. I had the opportunity to work as a page. I worked at the front circulation desk as a clerk. Um, I were, had the opportunity to work with librarians there and do displays and just really work on some fantastic uh, projects while I was going to school. And then a couple of years before, right when I was about to graduate and get my master's degree and become a librarian, uh, I was laid off. Oh, my goodness. Yes. And so I was laid off from Chicago Public. That was, you know, around the time, the, the um, 2008, 2009, when we were going through recession. And right. so I fortunately was able to get hired uh, by University of Chicago their library, the Regenstein. And so I had the opportunity to work for University of Chicago Library and got to see what it is to work in an academic setting as opposed to a public library setting. Um, and really did a little bit of work was looking at special collections and going into special collections and archives, mm -hmm. but was recalled eventually back to Chicago Public Library. And when I came back, uh, I was uh, reclassified as a librarian because I had my master's degree and then began doing some phenomenal work with them. Um, I was really very grateful for the director that I had at the time, um, Brian Bannon. He gave me an opportunity. I had the opportunity to meet Susan Hildreth, who you may or may not be familiar with. She was the librarian of Congress, you know, so our, our right, yeah. IMLS, sorry, IMLS mm -hmm. under uh, Barack Obama. She served in that capacity. Um, and so 
I actually worked on some grants there to bring uh, Makerspaces, the Innovation Lab, to Chicago Public. It's one of the projects that I'm really proud of. It's still there to this day. Wonderful. Uh, and so it was really needed in that community. Um, did a lot of research on that. And so really just uh, was also then went on to explore. We had a number of people coming in from other countries who were uh, new uh, uh, citizens of our country. And so mm -hmm. wanted to get more information about that. Um, and then part of a Gates grant that we were working on was really studying internationally what library science looked like in the future. So as part of that, I... Uh, took an opportunity to take a position working at a library in Dubai um, and just really had a great opportunity there to see uh, from a different perspective library services um, and how the community used those services uh, as opposed to how we use the services here in the U.S. Um, and so then had the opportunity to work with some fantastic students and faculty there uh, and then came back to the U.S. and began working for L.A. County. Um, yeah, and so for, at L.A. County, I uh, worked at the A.C. Bilbrew Library managing that uh, and uh, that has also houses the Black Resource Center or the African American mm -hmm. History Collection for Archive for uh, LA County Libraries, uh, which was really a great opportunity. So you got a library inside a library, wow. so uh, the bigger library, but then you also are. I was overseeing the um, the the African American Resource Center. Uh, and then from there, we closed that library because we were going to be doing renovations. So re here's where my renovation oh. and construction work began. And I had the opportunity, thanks to uh, my director there, Margaret and Barbara, um, uh, who I worked with there. They just really gave me the opportunity to be able to participate in those projects, get a lot of knowledge went on to, after we closed AC Bilbrew Library for uh, for the, the renovation. Uh, I was then uh, moved over to the Manhattan Beach Library for the county, uh, which was a brand new build. And so had the opportunity to go in and do open up a brand new library from, you know, making sure the collection was in to, uh, you know, the punch walk, all of that. Uh, and, and we also had an automated materials handling system. It was one of the first in the LA County system. Mm. So had to, I had to get up, get on my hands and knees and get under there when it broke, <laughs> fix things. Um, but that's just kind of the person that I am. I kind of dig my hands in and just embrace uh, the work that I do. Uh, I love what I do uh, and, and continued um, my progression with that and went on to become county librarian in Nevada County uh, and then uh, served as city librarian in Torrance before coming here to Santa Cruz. I had been in this area, loved this area. And so when the opportunity came available, I immediately wanted to uh, put my hat in the ring and so glad and grateful to be here in Santa Cruz. Well, we're certainly happy to have you, and uh, Santa Cruz is very fortunate to have somebody with your experience. As I say, uh, reading your biography, really, it is so rich and varied, uh, but you are no stranger to uh, renovation projects when it comes to libraries. And certainly, we've undergone, with the passage of Measure S a few years ago, and renovating and rebuilding our, really, our entire library system, and a lot of it uh, under your watch. So tell us how that's been. Uh, the libraries that I've seen, the new ones that have been constructed, Capitola, we were discussing particularly just wonderful, but uh, Felton, Scotts Valley, you know, tell us about that uh, that progress and that process because it really has such beautified and benefited Santa Cruz County. Absolutely. So when I arrived here, and now it's about, I'm, I'm looking at the calendar a year and a half ago uh -huh. uh, when I started, I think at that time Capitola was open, uh, we had Felton open, and we had La Selva Beach open. And then last year, of course, was just a whirlwind of opening other libraries. We opened uh, Garfield Park, we opened our, um, our Live Oak Library, Scotts Valley, as you said, uh, 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 Boulder Creek. Uh, so yeah. yeah, a lot of big openings, uh, renovations. And then also as we were doing that, 
We're also working on the Aptos library, as you know. And so I'm well aware, yes, yes indeed. Yeah. Right. So um I think, you know, first of all, let me say that I think it's fantastic that the Santa Cruz community, right, believes so strongly in libraries and are willing to support the infrastructure needed to make sure that the library continues into the future, right? When we think of the older buildings, we don't have outlets where they're high technology now. Um, and so making sure that the library facilities across the county have those uh, those needed pieces to sustain the infrastructure is really important. So that's, I just want to thank this whole community for coming out and supporting Measure S, uh, as well as our friends of the library for Absolutely. supporting I was going to mention that. Yeah. They've raised a lot of money to help add additional pieces to these libraries. Um, so as you know, after the pandemic, uh, this was challenging because of uh, not only the way that we were providing library service and buildings closed down and we want to be safe uh, with regard to letting people back in the buildings, um, but also with regard to supply chain. So we're in the middle of the construction projects. We had anticipated a number of opening dates and those dates kept getting pushed back for us because supply chain. We couldn't get the materials needed to finish construction. Uh, construction delays took place because you have, you know, if you have people and somebody gets sick, right, then you got, it might be, the, you know, you, you're delayed in getting more people into the building to complete the construction. So all of those were really important factors that really affected our timing. Um, but I'm just really so glad that we were able to get everything together. Um, I think our latest one, like I said, we opened four last year. We're getting ready to open our Brand Safordi Library. Uh, but Brand Safordi, really, we had it in, in line to open last year about this time. But we were just so delayed um, on supply chain. And when you walk in, you'll be able to see there's a lot of glass. <laughs> so there are glass study rooms, a teen room. Uh, the community room turned out beautifully, um, but a lot of it was we were waiting on glass to come in and the supply chain. And then the glass factory had some issues where they had to close. So then we had to go out and get a whole new vendor for glass and then to do the etching. So we are just Again, so happy that that branch is going to be opening. I go over uh, to, to do some construction walks and have had the opportunity to uh, have some of the people from the neighborhood stop by and kind of say, oh, my gosh, you're, you're opening. Strong neighborhood support. Right. So everybody, I think, is really thrilled and excited uh, for the reopening of Brand Safordi. Um, Garfield T Park in the city of Santa Cruz turned out really wonderful. That's uh, in my neighborhood. That's my my, that's, my library. Yes. And so it was just beautiful, the restoration of that Carnegie Library. Again, if you haven't been over to see it, I highly recommend that any of your viewers who are watching this go out and take a visit to all of the branches cool. that we've reopened. Um, Boulder Creek, when you go into the children's room, it's just phenomenal. It just feels, it has the feel of being in a tree house. It's really magical. So as a kid going into that space, I just think it's fantastic. Um, and then, uh, like I said, Garfield's beautiful, stunning for that neighborhood. Brand Safordi's getting ready to open. Scotts Valley, Scotts Valley, we really uh, went into that project uh, where it, it was done about 11 years ago, right? That's when it first opened. But the building had some seismic issues. So we wanted to make sure that it was seismically stable. We got those taken care of, the roof. Uh, as you know, there's the front lobby area is fantastic. The community room was enclosed. We've been holding a number of meetings in that uh, community room, uh, which is fantastic. So uh, with the little fireplace and the fireside room, uh, the study rooms are there. So again, all of these great pieces that we didn't have previously are now being made available in the neighborhood libraries, which is important. So um, all of these, all of these buildings, again, we are doing our best to get them opened. However, there's still additional pieces, I will say, that need to be done, right? Um, Measure S was great. It allowed us to do a lot of things, but we also recognize um, that we're still improving. 
and we're maintaining some funds at the library as well as with the county for their facilities to be able to continue to update this infrastructure so we don't end up with buildings that are so far behind that we can't continue to operate. Um, and so uh, Aptos Library is, is going to be opening, we believe, and I'm knocking wood here, um, that we're going to come in pretty close to on time in September this year. We're hoping the building can be turned over to us, the library, by July, where our staff can get in there end of July and start putting books on shelves and doing those types of things. Uh, because we need about six to eight weeks once we get the building turned over to us us to get everything in and set up for the doors to open. So we're really, uh, we don't have an official date yet, but we're hoping that it will be some, shortly after uh, Labor Day weekend that we'll be able to open the Aptos Library. And then of course we have the Live Oak Annex. Um, these two projects might come in around the same time. Live Oak Annex, uh, again, has some additional work that they're still trying to get done. Uh, but the foundation, the, you know, things are in place. Aptos, they've got walls up. It's very exciting. They've got walls up. They've got windows in. They've got paint. So there's paint and tile in the restrooms. They're installing fixtures. So that's why I say it's moving along at a really good pace. Um, and so we expect that to open again, knock wood, September. Uh, and it might be August or September uh, that the Live Oak Annex space would open as well. Um, and just a little bit about Live Oak Annex, it's a little different because it's not a library in the sense of traditional having books in it, but it is a library in regard to having the study rooms and the programming space. Our Live Oak Branch Library, which we opened last year, as you may know, it had a renovation of the children's area. Absolutely, I'm worried. Right, and put the, put a wall up so the teens could have a little bit more privacy and the little kids didn't kind of have to see what teens were doing. Um, and so that's a beautiful new children's room for being able to do story times and things like that, but there's no real adult programming space at Live Oak or space where we have our librarians go out and they do um, Minecraft, right? Or they will do, you know, animation classes. And so having a space where we can bring groups in to do uh, programming with our librarians or provide community-led programming like we're doing in Felton is really important. So the Live Oak Annex will serve as that space for the Live Oak community. Well, that's uh, wonderful news and, and great information. Uh, it's notable that you that you mentioned community support. We uh, uh, had some dark days a few years ago when they were thinking about shutting down some of the branch libraries here in Santa Cruz, and the community virtually stormed the city council chambers. You know, for many many nights. You know, saying you can't do this. We must find a way to maintain this system in its entirety because we have so many wonderful branch libraries that serve, you know, the niche people in the community. And uh, as it turned out, we're able to maintain all the branches. And of course, now it was before Measure S, now with Measure S, they're doing so much more wonderful work. I did want to uh, mention a little bit about uh, this children's program. I, one thing that struck me, um, I spent some time uh, uh, on the east side for a while, and uh, that's when they were renovating the library, the Live Oak Library. And all of a sudden, it opens up with this wonderful children's you know, area just children's, you know, the emphasis on that, where they can come in, not only be introduced to literature, but also to you know, early childhood socialization and do that. It's such an important part of the library you know, function. Tell us more about that. It really is. Um, it helps kids to develop their readiness for school. As you know, um, socialization is very important. And I will say this, that there are a number of families who homeschool, right, in, in all of our communities. The Felton community, I was just up there and they had, um, we, we had a wonderful program um, where the first partner came out 
uh, and she did a story time, an outdoor story time. It was a special reading that she did. Um, but we had our, uh, right before she came, we had a homeschool group of kids that were in the library and they go, they would go over to Discovery Park uh, and, and with, learn with their parents, right? And then they come into the library and they utilize the space and the kids were taking samples that they got from, you know, outdoors at Discovery Park. And then they were making their notes and journaling what they saw. Um, so the library can serve as that early learning space as well, right? We have manipulatives. Our librarians do a lot of work. You know, oftentimes people think, oh, well, your librarians are going to go and they're going to read a story. There's a lot more that goes into that. Um, and so when they do finger play, when they do songs, there are motor skills that they're working with the kids when they're saying, okay, stand up and wave your hands, right? There are different pieces to early childhood literature that they're incorporating there. And then part of their job is also informing parents so that when they go home, they can continue with these with the skills, right, and help build the skills that their children need to be successful, whether they're going to school or whether they're being homeschooled. Uh, so really, we think that's really important work. And it's the key, one of the key foundations of what public libraries do. Um, as you know, we're going to, after we finish Aptos and, and the Live Oak Annex, then the next big project would be the downtown library, the new facility, and that is anticipated to have a child care uh, facility uh, right there connected to the building. And so, you know, we love and welcome the opportunity to kind of do some early childhood programs with that child care center where they could either walk over to the library or our librarians could go there. Um, but just those are the connections we love to make. And we do a lot of work with our schools here locally. Um, we recently went out to Scotts Valley uh, High School to open library cards for uh, high school students. Um, and it was just really great. We were able to capture actually some video. So you can check out our YouTube channel um, with video of some of the students who, after they got their library card, they we asked them, so why, you know, why do you, why is this important to you? And it was just really fantastic to hear from students. Um, how much that library card means to them, right? To be able to get materials and books um, without having to pay for it, um, you know, but but it's free, right? They can utilize our space, our study rooms. Um, so it's just really exciting. And again, working with children, teens, that's really key fundamentals to what we do in the public library system. But also, as you talked about, kind of with the programming, um, we also do adult programming and we're doing, right, we're doing some great community led programming. Our Felton friends, our Aptos friends actually have our one, com our community reads program, mm -hmm. uh, which they do annually. And it, it not, not only happens in Aptos, it happens across the system. They do programming uh, system wide um, at various locations and collaborate with community partners. And then, um, you know, our Felton friends have begun a community led learning program where they're working in their community to really address things that are relevant to the Felton community, right? Because they had fires uh, recently. They yeah, did a fire readiness, prepare your home for fire, right? So they had the fire department come out and do a talk. And then they walked participants of that program down to a local, um, a, a nearby house where they had cleared their land approach appropriately and said, here's how you create the fire break, right? And so that's really important to the Felton community. Um, they're doing art programs, right? They're doing water-wise programs and had a, a, a tour recently and programming around uh, water in, in the Felton community. And so being able to do those community-based programs, that's why, as you said, it's so important to have branches in each neighborhood because what's important to Felton might be a little different than what's important to Boulder Creek and might be a little different than what's important to La Selva. That's and right. so yeah. being able to develop programming that is really supported uh, by the community needs is really important. Well, I think uh, it's worth noting that uh, Santa Cruz is very fortunate to have a, a modern forward-thinking director at a time when the library model, I think, is changing its 
becoming more of a hub of connectivity for the community. And when I go to the downtown library, I see an office for the Veterans Affairs. I see an office for the Homeless Garden Project, which I didn't know was there. But all these things are connecting people in the community. And I think that is the new kind of a library that we as a community would like to see. Absolutely. We have some great programs that we support at the downtown library. Um, and it's really uh, things that we'd love to expand outward as well to some of our other communities. But you're you're correct. We we work with the Homeless Garden Project. We work with the veterans, right? We have our Life Literacy Center where we have Encompass come in. We try to help people direct them to housing resources, right? And because we know that we have a number of, of patrons who might be unhoused. We know that we serve as that space where they can come, they can warm up, they can, you know, if it's hot outside, they can cool down. Um, but we also want to help get people to the resources that they need. It goes to that, again, to that digital navigators program. We have laptops that we check out, we have hotspots that we check out, but ultimately you're checking that out for a few weeks and we want you to be able to have access on a regular basis. So if we can direct you to resources that allow you to be able to connect in that way, we want to serve as the place to do that. We also recognize that there are some mental health challenges in our community, and so we want to be supportive in that way. Ment not just mental health, but physical health and wellness, right? We have a partnership with Dignity Health, where they bring a bus out to the Scotts Valley Library. We're going to be expanding that to the Felton Library community, um, and they have people who come on site on that health bus, and they actually can do testing for you. So you may, if this is not for people who are on Medicare or Medi-Cal because they can get treatment, but this is for members of the community who might be working, right, but you can't afford your deductible. And so you can go there and get, you know, uh, assessment. You can get your assessment done. You can have your blood pressure checked. You can, there are a number of things that they can do there for free, for free for you, right, to help you with your uh, with your wellness. And so um, we think this is really important um, to form these types of partnerships because we recognize there are people in the community who may not be having regular access to these types of services. I will tell you this, that we were, um, the, the Dignity Health Bus is slowly starting to build, uh, you know, patronage. Um, and when the storms hit, we did let them come inside. They weren't in their bus. We had them come inside because we didn't want people getting treatment and having to stand out in the rain to wait to get on the bus for treatment. We opened up our study rooms to and our community room to allow people to be able to come in there and be seen in that way. Um, but I will say this, that uh, we we got some feedback from them and they were really reached out to us to tell us they were really grateful that there are some regular patrons that they're seeing now um, who are improving their health. And in, in one case, there was someone who even had not been diagnosed, uh, but they were able to diagnose the person and get them into early treatment um, because they came to that Dignity Health Bus and we had it there, right? It's wonderful, yeah. It's wonderful. That's success, right? That's what we want. People are made aware of all of the range of services things. Uh, you know, Lon Wilburn, uh, library director for our Great Santa Cruz uh, Library System. Thank you for being here. We're, uh, we, the time has gone right far too quickly. Wow. <laughs> There's much, much more that we could talk about. And so we're going to have to have you back and talk again. But again, you know, thank you and welcome uh, to Santa Cruz. Uh, as I say, we're very fortunate to have a modern forward thinking director of our library system at a time when the library is really reaching out to the community. So thank you for being here. Thank you for taking the time. And we will certainly talk again. And thanks Absolutely. For work. Happy to be thanks. here and thank you so much for having me and looking forward to coming back. Great. Absolutely. Thanks again. Thank this you. is Steve Plage for Nonprofit Spotlight. Tune in again next time when we'll be talking about another great organization.